all in a very fervent pursuit of justice and transparency tonight we shall be sitting down with a renowned human rights lawyer mr Femi Falana, who has filed a groundbreaking lawsuit challenging the government's of uh, uh, on the prices of commodities and he wants the government to fix the prices of essential commodities with unwavering determination mr Falano I say sought to unravel the intricacies of how the government is allocating uh, the benefit and accrual funds resulting from the removal of fuel subsidies in a nation where economic policies deeply impact the livelihoods of millions is legal endeavor not only owes the authorities to account but also echoes the collective demand for accountability and equitable distribution of resources so now we delve into the depths of this legal battle we confront pivot to questions about accountability economic justice and these fundamental rights of citizens so fair and transparent governance mr femi falano a senior advocate of nigeria joins us live from our lagos studio thank you so much leonard sick for your time tonight thank you Jim. all right i think there should begin a conversation tonight about what uh you said at a, a recent event in lagos uh, perhaps uh, at a bear call, uh event uh, which we saw you in a video that's gone viral when you are making mentions about accruers from the benefits of first subsidy remover that those who will be imagine what exactly is mr fernando talking about can you just briefly uh, summarize what you meant in that video well my, my position um was anchored on official figures released by the government on a monthly basis. Uh, and, and a couple of months ago, the Minister of Finance and the Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Mr. Wale Adu, did announce publicly that since the removal of first subsidy, there has been no month that the money shared by the three tasks of government had been less than one trillion naira. Whereas in April last year, before the removal, the amount shared by FAC was 655 billion naira. In July, the amount shared was one meant to be shared was 1.9 trillion naira but the federal government and the state government in their wisdom said we will keep part of this money so we'll keep 900 billion naira while we will share 1 trillion naira in december the amount shared was 1.7 trillion naira so if at the end of the day the government the federation government of the federation and i'm talking of the three tasks of government is smiling to the bank or banks with uh, what is between 500 and 1 trillion era, uh, additional funds members of the public are entitled to the benefit of the remover, because that was the promise. We are removing for a subsidy so that the money wasted, you know, on importation of fuel will be channeled towards the development of the country to address infrastructural challenge, you know, to alleviate poverty, and so on and so forth. And what we are simply asking, not from the federal government alone, from the state governments, local governments. Where are the benefits of first subsidy removal? Simple and straightforward. I'm not concocting figures. These are the figures in the public domain. But, but, but where, where do we look uh, if to ask for these monies and how it has been spent? Uh, before the remover, if the allocation uh, between 2022 and 2023, if you compare the figures, it seems to uh, there are about three trillion naira difference 
in what accrued or what was shared at FAC, and that those will be asking question, where are these money? Just rightly that you have asked, how do we then be able to ask who and who of how the money was spent? Who should we be asking? Is it the federal government or the state government or the local government? So I have made my own point. Based on figures, who's in out of power, about for, for the seat of power? It is now left for the media and Nigerian people to find out where are the gains of first subsidy remover. And it's so simple and straightforward. And we are also demanding that on a monthly basis, as was the practice in the past, the uh, Office of the Accountant General, Accountant General of the Federation must publish what goes to every tire of government. That was a culture in the past. At a stage, we were told the government was going to be run in a rather opaque manner. But we are saying there can be no opacity in governance because Section 22 of the Constitution, in fact, has imposed a duty on the media to promote transparency and accountability in the government. So you have a duty. The media are compelled to demand on a monthly basis what goes to every tire of government. And then we compare what was being earned before uh, first subsidy remover and what is paid to the federation account after subsidy remover. You will recall, Shion, at a stage, for several months or even for almost a year, the NNPC did not remit any fund, any money to the federation account. But now we are told we are no longer spending on uh, uh, subsidy, you know, subsidizing fuel. Therefore, this is what we are making per month. And so, just like the federal government is saying, oh, we are giving a, a 35,000 naira to workers, even though we are told now that only two months have been paid. So, we also expect state governments, local governments, to also announce what you call palliatives. But uh, for me, I think the ideal thing would have been <coughs> if we are now making between 500 billion naira and 1 trillion naira, can we share 50%? Why the remaining 50% will be warehoused by an agency of the government, manned by credible people in the society to address challenges? In the area of education, in the area of health, road, you know, uh, network, and so on and so forth, so that we can see the advantage on code of subsidy remover. Many of us, some of us, were strictly opposed to the remover because there is no society, there is no country in the world where government does not subsidize one product or the other even in the most advanced capitalist societies. And that is why Nigerians must now begin to ask the government to discard and jettison the deleterious programs and policies of the IMF and World Bank. Because just yesterday, just yesterday, the IMF was asking the government remove first subsidy in its entirety and also increase electricity tariff whereas the government had told the nation and the imf and world bank come the political atmosphere in the country is not conducive to electricity tariff because our people are suffering the government is subsidizing the discourse two again just last no last month the IMF was accusing the British government of not investing enough in education and health. This same agency, this same, these Bretton Woods institutions are asking our government to remove all subsidies and impose a rush of increases on goods and services in our country. 
So I think these are the issues. This government must must Mr. Mr. Falano. To see that. Let me. Yeah. No. Sharon, this is very important. The only body, the only economic body recognized by the constitution to advise the president is the National Economic Council, headed by the vice president. And that body is peopled by the governors, the governor of the central bank, I mean state governors, governor, the governor of the central bank, the minister of finance. So why has that body abdicated its responsibility to the IMF and World Bank? So that is the body that uh, you mean, know, the, the majority are, of them are elected. Yeah. They are serving the people. So you must advise the president what your people are saying based on what your people are saying, based on their demands. So that, that is the body Mate, that... Are, are, are you worried, Mr. Falano? Because, yes. yeah, the, the, some of the feelers that, apart from the fact that the IMF, a few days ago, was advising the government that it needs to take away every kind of subsidy, even yes. on electricity, and the tariffs there are uh, therein. Um, there are also feelers that the IMF may not even have a total belief in the words of the government of Nigeria in the removal of free subsidy, because uh, there are feelers as to the fact that there might be the payment of subsidy on, uh, on fuel through the back door. Are you worried about that kind of feeling coming from that kind of global entity? You know, the global entity is not a neutral body. It does not give advice in vacuo. It is an ideological battle. These institutions were set up by imperialism, principally principally to destroy the economies of developing countries why they turn the other eye when western governments are giving subsidies to their people and i am challenging the imf here to take interest in the report of the uh the 2020 report of the auditor general of the federation presented to the um, sent to the national assembly last november that report is saying that the 3.5 billion dollars the loan of 3.5 billion dollars taken by nigeria from the imf cannot be located that is what the report is saying the imf should be interested in that because we are required to pay the loan in three years, between no, four years, between 2023 and 2027. So the IMF should be interested in that and stop mounting prayer on the government to multiply the hardship of Nigerians. And Nigerian, the government must, mount, you know, must summon the courage to tell this institution to mind their business and allow our country to be run in the interest of our country, I mean, in the interest of Nigeria, in Nigerians, because the Constitution, Section 16, has provided, has stipulated that the government of Nigeria shall be under a legal obligation to plan the economy of Nigeria, to run the economy of Nigeria, in order to promote happiness, not sadness. As it is the case now. And this wonderful country has enormous human and natural resources. If well husbanded, if well husbanded, you know, we should have no business with poverty. These institutions are not helping the government to recover the looted wealth of the country. Hidden in the West. In hidden in Western banks and, and, and financial, other financial institutions. So all they do is to mount prayer on the, on the government. Thou shall remove subsidies. Otherwise, your economy will collapse. But the economy of the United Kingdom is not collapsing. So, the economy of the United States is not co collapsing. Germany and the rest of them that are giving subsidies to their people. I mean, Mr. Falano, I mean, from what you said, I mean, when we look at it, the, the Nigerian economy had defiled the projections of the IMF against the projections of the Nigerian government uh, about the growth of the economy. 
and we see some growth in, in the positive direction at some point which shows that at some point the accuracy of the IMF projections uh, may not be valid. But let me take you to your battle in the courtroom. You are of the opinion that government should fix the price of essential commodities. And I had had opportunity to speak with economics, uh, economists who said that Mr. Falana, yes, uh, uh, a social idea, a welfareist idea, a populist idea to go to court to fight this battle, but it may not have a realistic economic implication or it may not be realistic uh, in the real sense of it. They say that is more or less an academic exercise. Are you worried that that court order may not see the light of day or may not be implemented or be obeyed? So, I can assure you, uh, after the deadline set by the court, we are going to take steps to enforce the judgment. Some of these guys are apostles of neoliberalism. It is only when it comes to the poor that they suddenly realize that a judgment of a court meant to compel the government to be accountable cannot be obeyed. That's what they do. Some of my colleagues, lawyers, have challenged me. I've challenged the judgment. Oh, we are running a capitalist system. It's a free market system. How can you ask the government to control prices? And I say, oh, by the way, the Nigerian legal profession is the most regulated in Nigeria. Most regulated. One. I must pay, if I fail to pay my practicing fees by 31st of every year, I can be disallowed from practicing law in any court in Nigeria. Number two, when I want to file papers, I must buy the stamp and seal designed by the Nigerian MBA, by the Nigerian Bar Association. And it must be affixed to every process, even the letters I write in my chamber. Furthermore, I must collect VAT from my client and remit to FRS for the MBA. The government came out with what they call 2023 remuneration order for all lawyers in Nigeria. That order has stipulated what I should charge my clients in a free market economy. Except a few of us who engage in pro bono work. Even then, it must be recorded by them. So these are the same guys who are coming out to say, how can you enforce this? But when the same system gives duty waivers to the rich, that can be enforced. When the same system gives tax relief to the rich, that can be enforced. But when it comes to the poor, and what, are, what we are saying here, Shim, is that majority of these goods are imported from abroad. Some members of the business community, you call them captains of industry, are giving duty waivers in five years under the, Buhari, the last five years under the Buhari administration. The duty waivers given to certain certain companies and individuals total 16 trillion naira the point is this if you are giving 16 trillion naira money that should have been paid to the federation account by the way for the benefit of all nigerians so you are now given by the government you you now want to go to town and sell your products without control by the government. That would be abdication of the duty of the government. And that is why that law has been there since 1977. I, I, didn't, I didn't enact the law. This, apart from the Price Control Act, you also have the Federal Consumer Protection Commission. These two bodies 
are set up to regulate prices, protect consumers from unwarranted exploitation. So unless those laws are repealed, we have a duty to go to court. And that was exactly what I did. And Mr. the court has yeah. grand, given his judgment. Mr. Falano, so... Yes. Yeah. yeah. So let me, let me jump in quickly. Uh, you were, I mean, you were recorded to have... Uh, uh, the, 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 there's an inference being drawn to your, uh, to your comment as to asking citizens to rise up in some kind of social revolution uh, on the policies of the government of the day uh, in terms of what has become uh, a worrying situation uh, in the price of commodities. Is that exactly what you are asking um, the, the Nigerian citizens to do uh, as a response to what is going on in the land? A social revolution is that what you are saying now in in uh i think niger state there was a protest of course there have been protests in many parts of the country without my knowledge and the governor ordered the arrest of the protesters the apc secretariat has issued the statement to the fact that the protests against the rising cost of living in our country are sponsored by some opposition or name opposition political parties. And all I've said is that it is the duty of Nigerians. It is the right of Nigerians to express themselves either through protest or writing articles, or whatever. We fought against obtaining police permit to protest in Nigeria. What the law now says, section 84, subsection 3, of the Police Establishment Act of 2020, is that during protest, the police shall provide security for the participants in such protests. And I'm saying Nigerians should be allowed to protest against injustices, against economic, inimical economic programs and policies. So, and, and it's a legitimate demand it is therefore a challenge to the government to move speedily to address the complaints of the people and not read political motivation into them. Uh, 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 so, uh, yeah. yeah. So, me, me, yeah. So, uh, I, th I think we should anchor on this note. Uh, where there is this divide and where the nation is at this crossroad. Uh, the citizens are on one hand they're feeling the pinch of the economic uh, uh, hardship. And the government on one hand says that it's committed into doing uh, what is right by Nigerians. In your own view, is this government under the Bola Tinubu administration misstepping? At, or are they doing the right thing? Or what do you, exactly do you think is the right way to go? We just have about 40 seconds to wrap up on the this. The right thing to do is to reject the prescriptions of the IMF and the World Bank. Remove fair subsidy, float your currency, and so on and so forth, which have never, have never assisted any country to develop. Secondly, the government is dancing around the problems. These circulars by the central bank will not, will not address the crisis in the forex market. Two issues that are not being addressed, is that there is a group of countries, there are countries in the world today, insisting that we are not going to be tied to the American dollars. We want to trade among ourselves in our currencies. And those countries are in BRICS. Brazil, India, Russia, China, and South Africa. Others are joining them. Saudi Arabia has joined them, UAE, Ethiopia, Egypt, and others. And Nigeria is not there. We cannot be more Catholic than the Pope 
if friends of the West are joining BRICS, why are we not there? So that we can trade countries, Nigeria and other countries can trade in their currency. We trade in Naira. The second one, in 2018, Nigeria and China enter into a currency swap agreement for five years. And I've asked the government, go back to China and say, please, Whereas when we signed that swap agreement in 2018, the uh, uh, volume of trade was in the area of $3 billion or thereabout. Last year, we imported goods worth $22 billion from China, even though we only exported goods of over $1.6 billion. Now, we should tell the Chinese, please, we need to increase. Because that agreement will expire in July. We need to renew the agreement. We need to renegotiate the agreement. And then the final one, Sean, is uh, remittances. It's about $25 billion. Where are the remittances? In 2017, I had to drag Mr. Godwin Mefile to the FCC when he said only $2.6 billion was coming to Nigeria. He said, no. And what did he do then? Is to ask you, if you have sent some money from abroad, you have to go and collect Naira. So the dollar component stayed abroad. And I said, no, this is fraudulent. And the FCC said, hey, Mr. Mifile, if you insist, this right. player is insisting that we should, uh, I mean, suggesting that we should charge you for money laundering. And at the end of the day, the central bank said, no, please collect your money right. in the currency to which it was sent so that you can take it, either you keep it in your domiciliary account or you change it. The Xander Bank is almost reversing that position. So at the end of the day, the remittances will not come to Nigeria, but we stay abroad. So these are uh, right. what you may call mm. liberal policies. If I had my way, my own radical policy would be that I would sell Nigeria gas and crude oil in Naira. Let those who want to buy our product look for Naira. And it's, that is how to promote your co currency. But this business right. of everybody looking for Mr. dollars, Mr. Falano, yeah. even to pay school fees, to pay school fees, you look for dollars. To rent houses, to sell houses, you collect dollars. It doesn't happen unless you dollarize your economy. So these are the issues the government will have to right. Mr. Falano, for yeah. us to come out of this economic doldrum. Thank you, Jim. Human rights activist, senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Falano. Thank you so much for your thoughts there. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.